There's a story that's often told about rural young people in sub-Saharan Africa. It suggests many young people are turning their backs on agriculture and rural areas in favour of the educational, employment and social opportunities they believe can only be found in larger towns and cities. It also suggests that because professional jobs are scarce, when young people do migrate to urban areas, they often end up doing low-wage jobs or roadside hawking and too often engage in risky or illegal behaviour. Alongside this is the idea that today's rural youth have more education, are more connected to the world, have higher aspirations and expectations than earlier generations, and consequently have little interest in hard work. The youths are not ready to work again. That will affect the economy into its entirety. So the economy is not moving at all because the young youths are not ready to work. But we, are, we, we keep telling them, we keep teaching them to know that if you want to, if you want to have a bright future, the, the, the foundation must be laid. Researchers set out to test some of these orthodox ideas in Nigeria to explore the challenges and opportunities facing young rural Africans as they seek employment and also how they imagine their own futures. Politicians and experts suggest that agriculture and the rural food sector offer good opportunities for young people. That by approaching farming as a business, young people could help transform the rural economy, improve food security and build a good future for themselves. The research set out to examine these claims. Aziz lives in Idiamo. He grows watermelon and peppers, but the majority of his farm is given to cassava. You cannot venture into farm and lose out completely. That's just it. You will have yours, even if it is little. So, but it's not that profitable in this moment. Like now, we are supposed to have harvested some cassavas already, but they are still in the farm now. Due to that, nobody will collect it from you. If you take it by force now and take it to the market, it's like as if you just wasted your effort. My father has been cultivating the farm and when they left, because my father is no more, and I started taking the part they left, so that's what I'm doing. I'm planting farm. I'm happy to be a farmer and I have passion for it. And I don't think that there's something that can claim that away from me in the future. Not now, not ever. If you pursue your education along with the farming, it will be quite different from those that are doing it without education. And I am sure if I have my degree, I know it will affect my family positively. And I will have to go and do a course that is related to farming because I don't want to be separated with it whatsoever because I like farm and because I was born into it and I've adapted to it. Most young rural Africans engage in agriculture or livestock production to some degree, but few of them view farming as a professional entrepreneurial opportunity. Some young people are clear. It's not the hard work, but the dirty physical drudgery of farming that they object to. This is an often overlooked difference between the views of young people and those of their elders and experts. Risikat is still in school, but is also training to be a tailor the profession she hopes will take her to the city. What I see is that when someone wants to work in order to get rich, they don't want hard and tedious work. Some people don't want to work. In this town, if one wants to work and become rich, they would till the ground and do tedious work, but you won't be in good shape anymore. The reason why I don't like farm work is that I don't like dirty work. If you work as a farmer, you will have food, but I don't like to be a farmer and be dirty. There is no way one will work as a farmer and not age quickly. You will age quickly and be dirty. Firstly, the reason for the challenges we face in this town is that there is no money. There is no money to work and make what you want. Secondly, the youth here don't want to work to get rich. The reason I want to go to the city is that when I get there, I will see styles that are better than the ones here. When I get to the city, I will sew something small and they will pay me lots of money.
Jamu divides his time between several occupations. As well as working in farming, he's an Okada rider, using his motorbike as a local taxi service. The reason why I work as a farmer is that everything has its own time. When oranges are in season, I will leave the Okada business and work on the farm. It is when oranges go out of season that I do the Okada business in order to hustle and make ends meet. In the future, I want to keep progressing because I see those who work as farmers and have become rich. If I have money to do the work, then from there, may God be merciful and send helpers to me so that I will be successful in it. But I am interested in being a farmer if I have the fund to do it in the future. The biggest challenge I face with my work is that when we are farming, I ask my friend, who usually helps me with plowing the ground, so I will have to give him money from my pocket. And when we take the produce out, the roads are bad, so we have to use the motorbike. This is something we are supposed to use a truck to haul the produce at once, but we have to use Okada to haul the produce bit by bit, and this takes a lot of time. Farming is a hard job, and that is why I like it. I don't want to do the kind of work where I won't have to sweat. I prefer farming to some other kind of work because there is gain in it, and that is why I decided to do it. When it is time for me to work on the farm, I won't even go near Okada business. I see a lot of gain in it compared to the Okada business that I do. A key insight from the research is that while some young people leave rural areas, many more stay and build their livelihoods. And to a greater or lesser extent, most of these livelihoods engage with farming and food, as producers, labourers, caterers or traders. However, relatively few imagine their futures as revolving around farming. The issue here is not about consciousness raising or mindset change but rather the need to address the web of deeply embedded forces that structure the landscape of rural opportunity.